and uh, had a hell of a main event. Yeah, I thought it was kind of that a, much. I thought it was kind of a nothing show, but great main event. You know, um, and 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 a good build to the main event. I mean, they it was Gunther and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Title, but they they basically said that you know if if Gunther wins, he breaks the all time record set by the Honky Tonk Man, and they spent the whole show building this match up, including clip after clip showing clips of, you know. Pat Patterson and all these different champions in the last 44 years and they really put it over like uh you know it was a big historical hey, it thing. It was history, it, dude. 40 years or something like that. 44 years. Yeah, yeah. 44 yeah, years they, that record held. Since since the guy introduced Pat Patterson showed up on TV when as the he had been the North American champion. They'd introduced the North American title and Ted DiBiase came in as champion and then Patterson beat Ted DiBiase and then one day he shows up and he's got a new belt, and they say he's the Intercontinental t- Champion, and he won a title in Rio de Janeiro, which, of course, was all fictitious. And I remember, like, he, he shows up as Intercontinental Champion, and the announcers, which I think was Vince, just goes, what's that? And then they explain he won this title, and it's like, you know, if he's going to win the title in Rio de Janeiro, maybe you should have known about it or something. But, uh-huh. you know, they thought it was like a made-up title, but now it's like this big historical deal, and Pat Patterson, you know, was... Went to Rio de Janeiro, and I don't know who he beat down there. Well, Honky's record stood for 35 years or something like that. Yeah, I guess it's so. It's nothing sacred, even the Honky Tonk Man's record. You know, I'm surprised Finally it lasted fallen. this. I'm surprised it lasted this long. Well, especially now, because now it's like they're really into those type of things. You know, breaking records and long, long championship reigns. I mean, it's like the new... That's just the way that they're booking now. So... um it was inevitable that they'd find somebody, but uh, it's you know, it's, it's Gunther's done a great job, and uh, oh yeah, they, they him and Gable that was that was an excellent match. We had Adam Pierce meeting with Jay Uso, and he said, you know, people are going to be mad because SmackDown is getting trade compensation so for you coming it? over. Who's going to head over? He says when that person goes to SmackDown, people might be pissed off. I was like, the I mean, dude's quit. It's got to be a top. It's got to be a top guy. I guess so. McIntyre, Cody Rhodes. They can't do McIntyre or Cody. I guess they could do Cody because he has no feud. But McIntyre is like, although McIntyre has threatened Cody, so looks like McIntyre and Cody are going to do something. So they should technically be on the same brand, although it doesn't matter. Okay, so who who else? Who else? They they can't do Seth. Could send Gunther over. Yeah, but then it's only going to be one guy. Then they then they then that breaks up Imperium. So I don't know if that... Nah, I mean, just said I, you, trade compensation. He didn't say one guy. I guess he did say win that person. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. But it's got to be somebody big. Yeah. Maybe Sammy they'll send, Zane... Maybe they'll send uh, Chelsea Green over. No. That's not trade compensation. Sammy Zayn, J.D. McDonough. These guys could have had a really good match, but it was just an angle. J.D. gets some heat. Sammy makes a big comeback. And then... Uh, Dom runs down. Sammy's beating the hell out of Dom all over the place, not a DQ. But it's a distraction. JD rolls him up and pins him. And then Pull, Sam, holding tights. Sammy goes after Dom afterwards, and he's going to give him the boot, but JD yanks Dom to safety. And so Sammy then grabs JD, and he starts killing him, and Dom just gets out of there. Just Dom just bails on him. Bails on this dude, and then JD... Uh, ended up taking the kick in the corner, and that was the end of that. So then Finn and Damian... I'll, I'll tell you the thing with with Sammy is, like, every time I watch him and he's doing these matches and getting beat, it just reminds me how over this guy was in February and how, you know, like, they, you know, they never, like, like he got super over. They never saw him at that level, And they still don't see him at that level. He's a star, don't get me wrong. You know, he was a tag team champion until Saturday. But, I mean, in singles matches, I mean, you know, everybody beat Sami Zayn. And, you know, he he looked like the hottest baby face they had in so long. And, I mean, now, you know, I mean, it was one thing when it was, like, you know, uh, Damian Priest or, you know, someone like that, you know, or the... Or um, the Usos, or whatever, you know, or Solo Sokoa, you know. But now it's freaking JD. Well, Finn and Damien meet with JD afterwards, and they're happy about what went down. They're about to go celebrate when Dom says, "Hold on, I got something I got to do." 
So he goes up to Jey Uso and he gives him this speech about how we both had Hall of Fame fathers. We both came from messed up families. I know what you're going through. And I'm serious here. You got no family. Nobody likes you just like nobody liked me. But since a judgment day came into my life, we're all equals. So I can go talk to him if you want. But there's always going to be open arms for you in the judgment day. And he walks off. I don't think Jay Uso is going to join the Judgment Day. Be my guess. I don't think so either. But uh, that's that. So they may, but they may do a Jay Uso Dom match, which which you know would be fine. And then the main event was awesome. It was Gunther, Chad Gable, yeah, Superman, Superman, Intercontinental Title. Heat was just Gunther chopping the shit out of this poor guy, just beating the hell out of him. And then Chad makes his big comeback. And he did the run up the rope superplex. He hit a diving headbutt. He makes the cover. The fans are going nuts like that. Like the fans believe Chad Gable might pin this guy. I mean, they went crazy for that near fall, that diving headbutt. Yeah. And then he goes for the moonsault, and Gunther gets the foot up, but Chad grabs the foot. He puts him in the ankle lock. And then he scissors the uh, leg on top of that, like Kurt Angle used to do. But Gunther manages to get out of that. And then uh, finally, uh, Gunther uh, counters into a sleeper. Gable chants. Gable fights out. He reverses into a quick cradle. Gunther then grabs him in another sleeper. He gives him the sleeper suplex. Looked like he landed right on his head. But they showed replays, and I actually don't think he even touched his head at all. I think he landed on his hair. It was very, very well done. And then uh, Gunther power bombs him to death, kills him with a lariat, and pins him. And they had Chad Gable's family in the front row. And as soon as he got crying. in, his daughter is just, she's so sad. She's just wailing. It was mm. heart wrenching. But you know what? One of these days, she's going to realize how awesome her father was in this match. And so it's history. Gunther yeah. I, is. I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't a fan of focusing on her, but. Well, you know. they had the family there and. I mean, they yeah. put him in the front row for a reason. For that, I know it was there for the. She was there for that reason. It's like she was pretty young. You know, it's like if 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 you're like older and a really good actress and you can pull that off, that's awesome. But it felt like traumatized. I mean, she had that traumatized thing, and I, I wasn't comfortable with that at all. So I didn't like that. Gunther's beating the reign of Honky Tonk Man, greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, Gunther. Mm -hmm. And man, that was a hell of a main event. That main event was great. Mm -hmm. It was. It was a great match. I guess match. we'll find out if they follow up on old Chad Gable or if that's it for him. I know. I mean, usually, usually, um, historically, it's not a good pattern. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> He's in tears talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home. Scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they oh, used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh really? Well, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor wait a second. There's an article on this. Can you can you send me this article? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know. Wrestling or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and Trinity Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. Sorry. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.